Uh, well, no, no. Why, why was it? Why specifically Abu Lais? So Abu Lais because, and I told him, I actually mentioned this to him as well. So Abu Lais because Lais bin Sa'ad, rahimahullah, he was sent a letter by Imam Malik, rahimahullah, okay. right? It comes in Ilam al muqim So uh, Imam Malik sent him a letter that I heard that in Egypt, you guys are doing other than what we are doing in Medina, meaning the practices of Medina, they should take priority over the practices of any other Muslim land, because this is where the Sahaba were, uh, this is where the Prophet Sallallahu migrated, and uh, so he was making, he made all of these points, so Lais bin Sa'ad, rahimahullah, he sent him a very respectful letter, which was also a rebuttal to what Imam Malik, rahmatullahi was saying, and uh, this, uh, he sent him this letter, and after this letter was sent, he mentioned that you know, Sahaba, they went to different areas, different regions, such as Kufa, Egypt, Syria, and they instituted different amals over there. So it, is, it isn't as if Medina, uh, as great as it is, it, it is the greatest city after, after Mecca. It isn't as if uh, Medina has some kind of uh, uh, lock on uh, what people are practicing, right? what people are following. Because the Sahaba, they saw different things from Rasulullah yeah. sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You have Abdullah bin Masood, rahimahullah, radiyallahu an, who traveled to Kufa, and Ali radiyallahu an traveled to Kufa, and you see that the people of Kufa they adhere to the fiqh and uh, the the legal theories of uh, Abdullah bin Masood, of Ali radiyallahu an, etc. Uh, you have Sahaba who traveled to Egypt. And because of that, the people of Egypt, they follow whatever those Sahaba, those particular Sahaba witnessed from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi So it's not as if uh, Medina has a stranglehold over uh, what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi did. And this was the point that Lais bin Sa'ad was trying to get across to Imam Malik, rahimahullah. He was trying to say that Amal uh, Ahli Medina, it's not something that is valid. So this, I guess, didn't because Naim, he considers himself a Malik. I don't know why he considers himself a Malik. He's far from the Madhab Imam Malik. I don't even think he knows Maliki Fiqh, right? Not think. I know he doesn't know Maliki Fiqh, right? He doesn't <laughs> know Maliki Fiqh. He thinks he knows it. He doesn't. You mentioned about Abu Layth because we've gone off the topic. We need to stick to the topic. Of course. This Kunya, you mentioned he started by Abu Zain. Then he came on to Abu yes. Layth. And he's belittling Layth bin Sa'd yes. Rahimahullah yes. by saying, I'm his father. He's trying to one up. Okay. He's trying to stop one up because Layth bin Sa'd. Father Sa of Layth. Yes. He sent that letter. He sent that rebuttal. So, so if, you can expand, if you can expand on that, and then inshallah, I want to mention to the, to the audience about how this is such disrespect. And it could be, it could well be because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making him uh, murtad. If you could just expand yes. on that, and then inshallah, we're going to move on. Yeah, so as I said, Imam Malik, rahimahullah, he sent a letter to Lais bin Sa'ad that the people of Egypt, I heard that they are doing other than what we are doing in Medina. Lais bin Sa'ad, he sent a respectful letter back to Imam Malik, rahimahullah, and Imam Malik did not respond. So Naeem trying to one-up, he's trying to one-up Lais bin Sa'ad, rahimahullah, he started calling himself Abu Lais. And I asked him about this. I asked him about this and he didn't give any response. He gave, I think if I recall, it was an emoji with a wink. You know, the wink emoji, right? The wink of assurance. It was that. I'm sure right. Naeem has well, I just want to mention one thing here. I just want to mention one here. Laith bin Saad, okay. rahimahullah, was a mujtahid. Okay? He was mujtahid mutlaq. And he was on par, if not, many consider him as Afqah min Malik, rahimahullah. And we're not here to compare or to draw comparisons or say who's, where, you know, low people and we love them all. We respect all the Salaf. The issue here is to make yourself a kunya, father of life, belittling an imam of this ummah who is a mujtahid, right? And claiming to be a Maliki, this is something which is very detrimental to one's iman. And this should be made, you know, uh, 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 
um, known to the public that whatever your differences with the scholars may be, first and foremost, you're not qualified to differ with, with scholars. Scholars differ with scholars. The public don't differ with scholars because you don't have the credentials to differ with scholars in, in, in of issues of ijtihad. But whatever the differences may be, whatever camp you may be on, don't disrespect scholars. Don't belittle them. So we realized from the very outset that his whole name, and obviously this is one of the reasons. I'll mention another reason. He's running from Naheem Ajmal because when you Google it, as it's going to come up, okay, some naughty naughty comes online. Right? So this is probably another reason. So number one, Abu Laith, he's aiming at attacking a mujtahid mutlaq imam of this ummah, Laith bin Sa'ad rahimahullah ta'ala, in the name of being a fake Maliki. This guy is Mirzai. He's a follower of Mirza Qadiani. Ahwani. He's not, he's, he doesn't subscribe to anything. He subscribes to being, he's a Shahwani. That's, that's yeah. So I'll just explain what Shahwani is. This is a this is a nice this is another nice name we're gonna to put to his name. Shahwani. <laughs> well, let me explain what Shahwani is, please. Somebody who someone, follows his someone desires. who has made his, his deficient aql as his khuda. That's what he's done. He has naqis aql. He doesn't understand anything, right? Simple fiqh eludes him. Simple fiqh eludes him. There were there were instances where he didn't know. Simple fix such as uh, that according according to the Hanafi school, milkia is a requirement for zakat, right? That when you give zakat to someone, mm -hmm. milkia. Right? This is a requisite, right? Everybody knows this. A second year student knows this. That when you give zakat yep. to someone who is to any of the asnaf, any of the categories that are mentioned in the Quran, that there has to be milkia, there has to be proprietorship, there has to be ownership. Of that, of that wealth, he didn't know something like that. And you can ask, you can ask, um, you know, our, our, our peers, our colleagues, those people who, who knew Naeem, there are many people, it's not just me, that know about Naeem, there are many people who know about him. He just chooses not to talk to me. He has not talked to me for three years. He's never been in contact with me. Obviously, you're not going to get in contact with me. I mean, you, you, you're, you're a jerk. You're running away from me. Right, because you have something to hide. That oh yeah, you know this naive. And he calls me naive. Um, that uh, this guy knows he has the goods on me, and he's going to expose me. Now you were exposed way before that. You were exposed way before that. It's just that it's just now your chabasat has become international. At that time, your chabasat was limited. It was within a certain circle, right? But now your chabasat has become. International, you're international khabis. And they should make a movie out of that. International khabis. <laughs> Father Gonzalez, <laughs> Anthony Gonzalez. <laughs> this is why. So, in the words of Anthony Gonzalez, isn't it that same Anthony Gonzalez who says, uh, <laughs> "Father ko beta nahi, baap kehte hain baap." <laughs> so, take that from me, ah. Huh? Just as a nice, you know, Abu you can take that. You know, this. <laughs> you know, this. <laughs> you know, this. You know, this. You You know, this. 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 You know, this.